Welcome to the Writer Reads Short Stories. This is Earth and Lunar Dreaming Part 3. You'll need to become human again if you want to talk, she said, but Kitan just gave her a happy full-jawed yawn and lay down on the floor. Fine, have it your way, she sulked. I need to sleep anyway. Kitan closed his eyes and buried his nose under the tip of his tail. Of one thing he was sure, the tiger would definitely not fit down the tunnel and this chamber was probably not on any of the schematics. It would be one of those anomalies that only an expert could detect, and he doubted that even an expert would be able to get into it without making a lot of noise. He woke to the smell of a self-heating meal set inches from his nose. The child was sitting on her bed, looking at him expectantly. It's beef, she said, when she saw him open his eyes. Kitan looked at her and yawned, and then he stretched and yawned again. Self-heat or not, the food smelled good, so he ate, and then sat in the corner and stared at the child. There were too many questions he wanted answered for him to stay a wolf, and he didn't want to become human again until he had more room to move. He nudged the mesh grill with his nose and glanced back at the girl expectantly. When she didn't move, he nudged the grill again and then looked back at her with a grumbling whine. Do you think it's safe to leave? He gave a soft woof and she got up. You going to tell me what you're doing? Kitan nudged the notebook and the auto cam and looked at her. You want to use the net? Kitan gave another quiet woof. Do we still need to hide? Woof woof. Okay then, I think I know a place. It's not as safe as here, but there's room to run away in, okay? Kitan wagged his tail and the child took down the grill and led the way into the maintenance shaft. This time they came out somewhere in the business district, a level up from Nev's, near a loading dock. Lots of exits, the child explained as Kitan slid into his human body once more. Thank you, Kitan said, and settled himself on an upturned box. What's your name? I remember Tally, the child said, shyness softening her tone. Do you like it? I... it's okay, I guess. Good, I need to make a call. You trust me? I let you out, didn't I? Kitan regarded her for a long moment. He didn't want to think of the meaning behind that. It was just not something he wanted to contemplate. I'm calling Odyssey, he said. To check on the kitty? Yep. Okay. Kitan placed the call, making sure Tally was out of the camera shot and making sure his backdrop was the slab-sided wall of the dock. He even tried not to look past the screen to give no indication Tally was within range. You took your time. The woman on the other end was blonde and had the heart-shaped face of an angel. She'd fool most people, but Kitan had caught a glimpse of her eyes before she turned her attention fully to the screen. He didn't want her hunting him, ever. Here was to hoping she never would. What do you want with the child? She's one of a dozen taken by Rafferty. Kitan closed the notebook and stood up. We have to go, he said, and then registered the voice coming from the earbud he'd forgotten to disconnect. But we took him down four weeks ago. Kitan stopped mid-stride, turned round and settled back onto the crate. The woman was visibly annoyed when he opened the laptop once more. It's what Matt was trying to tell you yesterday. The child is safe. We're only trying to return her to where she came from. He ignored the movement that was Tally creeping closer to the back of the notebook, resisted the urge to look at her. And what if she doesn't want to go? She has to go back to her parents. Kitan kept his gaze steady, ignoring Tally's movement at his feet. What if she doesn't want to go? The woman stared at him. Wolfman, I don't think that's your decision to make. Kitan waited no longer. He snapped the laptop cover closed and stood up, turning to leave it and the earbuds on the crate. Run, he said to Tally, and she asked no questions, merely sprinting away from the loading dock before turning sharply into a narrow gap he would have missed. It was a squeeze even for his lanky frame, and Kitan gave in to the need to move quickly and shifted back into a wolf. Tally glanced down when she didn't hear him following, smiling when she saw the wolf. Come on, boy, she said, and fled. When they were several blocks distant, Tally slipped through a partly ajar gate and around a large potted fern. Right, she said, as Kitan came to a halt beside her. Do you need to make another call? Woof. Don't change back until I introduce you, she instructed, and Kitan cocked his head in question. Trust me, the girl whispered. 
Kitan whined softly, and she laid a hand on his head. Come on, we can borrow Stella's comb. Kitan shook her hand off his head, but let her lead him through the gate, which opened onto the courtyard space. As he moved, he took the time to look around, noting the profusion of ferns, orchids and flowers. Fruit trees were espaliered against every wall, and a waterfall cascaded down behind them in a recycled flow. Tally noticed his interest. You and Stell have a lot in common, she whispered, and Kitan glared at her. Those files were supposed to be private. Robbed of his voice, he growled. Tally was unrepentant. I was bored. You were sleeping. Come on. Stella turned out to be a dark-haired woman in her late thirties. She looked from Tally to Kitan and said, Is this your dad, then? Taking his cue, Kitan shifted back to his workman's disguise and held out his hand. Not exactly, he said. Pleased to meet you. This is Wolfman, and he needs to use your phone, Tally said. He likes your garden, by the way. Kitan felt his face heat with embarrassment, and Stella laughed, her brown eyes dancing with amusement. Well, if you're looking after her, that's good enough for me, Stella said. I was starting to wonder if she had a home to go to. From the look on Tally's face, that was news. I need to call Odyssey, he said. Do you have a secure line? Stella stopped, smiling. Why do you ask? Some of those flowers out there, he said are very hard to come by without a permit, and he hesitated. There was no polite way to say what he was thinking. Stella finished his sentence for him. I don't look like I could afford that many. She smiled when he nodded, but it was fleeting, and her next look was stern. This is for Tally, 